Oh, hello there, kitties. Uncle Willie's going to tell you a story. It's a story about two former friends, a mentor and a pupil, who were once on the same team, fighting for the same cause, but through dire circumstances are now forced to meet each other in glorious battle! You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you. I hate you! Whoops, sorry, wrong story. Uh, hang on a sec, let's see if I can find the right book here. Let's see, where are you? Come on, damn it. Ah, here we go. How Jones vs. Evans came to be. Once upon a time, there was a gym in Albuquerque, New Mexico named Jackson's Mixed Martial Arts. And in the stable of fighters that trained at that gym was a fighter named Rashad Evans. Rashad was a very talented athlete and entered the UFC by winning the Ultimate Fighter reality show back in 2005. He rose in the light heavyweight division and defeated Forrest Griffin winning the UFC light heavyweight title. Around the same time, another very gifted fighter named John Jones, who joined the Jacksons camp a couple years after Rashad did, successfully made his UFC debut. Jones looked up to Evans and had aspirations of attaining what he had achieved. Evans saw potential in Jones and began training with him and the two built up a friendship, and a relationship of mentor and pupil. Fast forward a couple years and Rashad is no longer champion. He lost his light heavyweight title to Lyoto Machida, who then lost it to Mauricio Shogun Hua in their rematch. And once again, Rashad has earned another shot at the light heavyweight championship after he defeated Rampage Jackson at UFC 114. The title fight between Shogun and Evans was then scheduled for a mid-spring or early summer event of 2011 to allow an injured Hua to recover from knee surgery. John Jones was quickly rising in the ranks and was scheduled to fight Ryan Bader in a match that would determine who would be thrown into the upper echelon of the light heavyweight division. Jones and Bader fought, and Jones emerged as the victor. After the match, it was announced in-ring that Rashad had to pull out of the title fight with Shogun due to a knee injury, and that Jones would be given the opportunity to take his place. Jones took the fight and defeated Shogun in a dominating performance, becoming the youngest UFC champion ever and boosted his popularity when he made the headlines by aiding in the capture of a robber right before his title fight. Meanwhile, Jackson's Mixed Martial Arts became a premier gym producing multiple contenders and champions, and had a gym code of teammates never fighting each other. This caused Dana White to point out the fact that every fighter has a limited time in the sport, and are only hindering their monetary gains if they refuse to fight teammates which caused John Jones to reconsider his mentality of never fighting teammates, and stated in an interview that he would only fight Rashad if Dana White gave him no other alternative. This didn't go well with Rashad. So feeling betrayed and seeing how it was going to be inevitable that he was going to fight John Jones anyway, Rashad decided to leave Jackson's gym and form his own camp down in Florida that is now known as the Black Zillions. The fight between John Jones and Rashad Evans was then set to take place at UFC 133. But the fight never happened. John Jones wasn't ready to fight at UFC 133 due to a hand injury and needed time to heal. So instead, Phil Davis took his place and was scheduled to face Rashad at the event. However, about four weeks away from the fight, Davis injured his knee and Tito Ortiz, who was fresh off his upset victory against Ryan Bader, was brought in on short notice to fill in for the injured Davis. So they fought at UFC 133 and Rashad defeated Tito in the second round via TKO. Jones was then scheduled to fight Rampage Jackson at UFC 135, and Jones defeated Jackson via rear naked choke. The Jones vs Evans fight was then rumored to be scheduled for UFC 140. However, a thumb injury caused Evans to pull out of the fight and he was replaced by Lyoto Machida. So Jones and Machida fought at UFC 140 and Jones dominated Machida finishing him off with a guillotine choke in the second round. After each dominating performance, Jones' hype grew and so did his confidence. Many people were placing him high in their pound for pound lists and were saying that he was unstoppable. But of course, there was one man that didn't agree, and after defeating Phil Davis at a UFC on Fox event, Rashad met his former training partner in the ring at UFC 145. At first, the two appeared well matched with the fight going back and forth in the earlier rounds, but eventually, Evans fell into Jones' pace and became overwhelmed. At that point, Jones pressured Evans, controlled the fight with his reach, and won a decision victory over his former teammate and mentor. So what happened next, you ask? Rashad would return back to his camp in Florida and continue to train and improve to hopefully one day regain what he had lost. As for Jones, the future appears bright. The champion would return back to Jackson's gym and continue to train and evolve as a martial artist. As he watches the sun set over Albuquerque, he prepares himself for the next opponent that would ultimately add to his legacy. And also get totally wasted and drive his $200,000 Bentley into a telephone pole. So, so what happened was that I, I was driving, right, and my, my greatness, it's, it's like an aura, you know, 
and uh, it was shining. And since that I'm so great, it was shining so bright that the light reflected off my mirrors and it blinded me, causing me to lose control of the vehicle and crash into the pole. Hey, it managed to work for Nike. Hello, everybody. I just want to show some love to some very cool people. I want to throw a shout out to Huda19, who's a pretty funny dude, so check out his channel. Also, want to throw out some love to the guys over at Tonight's Fights who developed a pretty cool app for your smartphone. When you get a chance, you should definitely check out their Facebook page. The link is in the description box below. And finally, big congrats to Prebeck. If you haven't heard of this guy, he does some amazing impersonations of fighters and personalities from the MMA world. He's so good in fact that he got the attention of Ariel Hawani who featured him on the MMA Hour a couple weeks ago. So check him out if you haven't already. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully, the next video won't take another 3 months to be released.